This is one of my favorite travel gadgets of all time. Actually, scrap that. This is one of my favorite networking accessories of all time. It's made by Asus and costs less than a hundred quid. But the question is, what can it do? And how much does it cost? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out. So if you go online and search to buy a Wi-Fi 6 access point, you'll be spending anywhere between 80 to 200 quid, depending on the size and performance of the access point. This little device is Wi-Fi 6. It has Wi-Fi 6 built in and it can be an access point, but it can also be an extender a router, a media bridge. As well as that, there's numerous different ways to get this device online. You can feed it a bog standard ethernet cable, you can connect it to a Wi-Fi network, or you can tether it via USB to your mobile device or USB 4G or 5G dongle. So I've come to my local charger to charge the Tesla and I think it's the perfect opportunity to test out some of the remote VPN features that I'm mostly looking forward to on this little device. The mode we're currently in is public Wi-Fi mode, WISP mode. Click on unable to connect to parent AP and then it's gonna scan for access points to connect to. Now, as you can see, a lot of these networks have the exact same name, but it's actually displaying them as different Wi-Fi networks. And that is to help you, the end user out, to home in on a specific access point that you want to connect to, being the one with the strongest signal, obviously. Once we've selected that, it's now asking us to put our own SSID and password in for this device. Now, this is the network name and password that the Asus router is actually going to give off using the BT Wi-Fi as its internet source. So I've connected directly to the Asus via my phone. And as you can see, we've got the welcome break splash portal here. So I'm gonna sign in to this Wi-Fi network. So logging onto the Asus device confirms that we're connected to the five gigahertz band of the public Wi-Fi and everything is working. Let's do our first speed test. And there we go, 80 meg. Now this is gonna get really cool now. Scroll down here until we see VPN, and then we're gonna press on VPN Fusion. Now, if we go here to add a profile, this is where it gets super cool. I'm gonna choose WireGuard here because the purpose of my VPN is I want to pretend that I'm at home so I can access files on a NAS, for example. Now, this is gonna require some setup on my home router's part, so let's go and tackle that first. I'm going into settings, VPN server, and I've got a WireGuard VPN server here, and I'm gonna add myself a new client. And I'm gonna go ahead and download the config here and then click add. Back over to the Asus router, you can see here that I've chosen WireGuard. Now that file that I just downloaded from my router back at home, I'm gonna click upload config and upload that exact file to this Asus router. Now let's give this a name, call it home connection. And then we'll go down here and we'll click apply and enable. Now, as you can see, we have our home connection through WireGuard VPN and it is connected. This basically means now everything that connects to this Asus router, either through an ethernet or over its Wi-Fi, will be accessing the VPN and will be pretending it's at home. So if I click go and connect to server and type in the local SMB share of my NAS at home, if I open up the TechFlow folder here, TechFlow legacy content, I mean, this is rapid. Here's some of the videos we've uploaded in 2024. I'm getting that 600 in. Well out in the garden so Ace is sent out that is actually garden. crazy is wild. i'm on the nas at home <laughs> So just to reiterate here, we've connected the Asus portable router to a public Wi-Fi hotspot. I've then connected to the Asus router and installed a VPN profile on it back home so that anything that connects to this thing's Wi-Fi is just at home. If you're not a fan of using the web UI as well, they make this app, which makes it really easy to go in and configure things like the VPN. So you can go in here and choose your VPN server. And this is all in the app. And just for those of you interested, a quick speed test whilst the VPN is active. And this is bonkers. I didn't think for 90 quid, this thing would perform as well as this. Have VPN performance like this. There's nowhere this thing falls short. It's 
Brilliant. Okay, so let's put all of that fancy Wi-Fi stealing VPN stuff off to one side and talk about the actual device itself, which is actually no bigger than my hand. Quick disclaimer, we didn't steal any Wi-Fi. It was free public Wi-Fi that was free to use. The actual device itself is pretty simple. On the front, it is basically plain. You turn the thing over and then you've just got a whole load of ventilation. As well as two mounting holes, which I've actually been using alongside some sticky cups to get this thing up in a window. As far as ports, it's powered via USB-C. Basically means this thing can be powered via a small battery bank if you want to go down that route. In the car earlier, we were actually powering it from the Tesla's USB-C socket. And then next to that, you've got two gigabit ports, one labeled WAN and LAN. Now there's one tiny little switch on this device and you can find it here next to the only little power indicator light, an activity light. This is a little multi-purpose switch but you can assign this to the VPN function. Now, the way I've been using this in my home life is I've got one Ethernet run that goes to my gaming desk upstairs. So if I plug that Ethernet cable into the Asus router and use it as a wireless access point, I've then got Wi-Fi upstairs, and then with that second LAN connection, I can plug that into my computer, giving my computer wired LAN and Wi-Fi on the top floor with just one socket. But let's show you how to steal some Wi-Fi. Now, out this window are all of my neighbours, and quite a lot of them have broadband with EE, which means they're all giving off free Wi-Fi. So I've connected the Asus device to one of these free EE Wi-Fis and logged in via the captive portal, so now this thing is online via one of the neighbours' internet connections. So with this logged in to the EE Wi-Fi and all connected, I can then connect to patch cable too the LAN side of this device, and then go ahead and plug the other side into a standard network switch. And now I've got a patch cable going into my computer that I'm also gonna join into this unmanaged switch. Now with this switch, we could basically run anything off it, smart TVs, even another wireless access point throughout the house. And I should mention, whilst the Asus router is in this mode, it is also working as a wireless repeater. So in this room, I do have a Wi-Fi signal on my phone that's basically coming from the neighbor's router. Right, let's see if we can get ourselves to Google. And there we are, on my computer, through the neighbor's Wi-Fi. Let's do a quick test on Google. And as you can see, it's actually pretty responsive. I wonder what the ping is. So if we just ping 1.1.1.1 here, and as you can see, 26, 25, 24, that is really acceptable. In fact, I think it may have just timed out. Yeah, there we go, we're back again. But I mean, this is basically free internet, which is crazy, almost unheard of. So I think it's safe to say that this little device is basically a networking party trick. There's nothing it can't really do. And I have only so far brushed the surface. There's so much more under the surface that we need to talk about. And I'm gonna try and do that at the end of this video. First off, let's talk about using this thing as a wireless repeater. So it takes your wireless signal and basically extends it. Now, there's two separate ways of accomplishing that with this device, depending on whether you have a main Asus router or not. If your main router isn't made by Asus, it's simple to go on this and put it in its wireless repeater mode. It will then scan for your existing wireless network. You put in the name and password, and then you're pretty much good to go. If your main router is also made by Asus, you can use Asus's built-in AI mesh, which makes the whole process even simpler. On our crazy GTBE98 router, all you have to do is set up an AI mesh node. The main router will then find this little device, you select it, and the rest is history. It will then go ahead and grab the main SSID and password from your Asus router and apply it to this device too. So you can place this device in an area of a dead spot in your house and you can just roam between your Asus router and this with zero dropouts using the same network name, which is really cool. If you've got this thing set up as a bog standard wireless repeater or the same thing, but through Asus's AI mesh, you can expect about 150 if you run a speed test connected to this device, which is wirelessly connected to your main router, which is really quite acceptable considering this is receiving from the client device and sending to the main router all in one job. 
If you just want to use this as a standard Wi-Fi 6 access point, that's also very acceptable and easy to do. You set it up in its wireless AP mode, connect in a patch cable, and off you go, much like I'm doing with my setup upstairs to give me Wi-Fi at my desk on the third floor of my house. With just one Ethernet connection, I can then run the LAN side to my computer, maintaining the hardwired connection to that while still adding Wi-Fi. And the best thing about it is, because this is powered by USB, USB-C, I can power it directly off my computer. Or, if you've got a PoE switch available, you can buy on Amazon these little PoE splitters which will split a USB-C power line and the data so you can basically turn this into a little PoE powered device, which is really, really cool. Another thing I recently figured out whilst playing with this is that it has a built-in splash portal. So let's say, for example, you own a coffee shop and you want all of your clients that come into the coffee shop to have free Wi-Fi with a splash portal. When your clients connect to the free Wi-Fi, it will bring up a splash portal that says, hey, welcome to TechFlow's coffee shop, for example. Click connect to get online. It just adds that little bit of extra professionalism and security to a public Wi-Fi network should you be wanting to set one up for clients of yours. I recently took a trip to Turkey with some friends and stayed in the most unreal villa imaginable. And obviously I took this little device in my carry-on with me because I didn't know what the internet situation was going to be like out there, thousands of kilometers away from home. This acted as the VPN, connected me to home and it worked really well. Now, the part of the video you've all been waiting for, the price. On Asus's website, this is currently 89 pounds. It is really invaluable, and it is a key part of my networking toolkit when I'm basically in or out of the house. I can make use of this thing. And for 89 quid, you really can't grumble. So with that being said, guys, that's been the review of the RTAX 57 Go. It's sick. I'll put the links in the description. And guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.